Hi, and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. I'm Jason Watt. In this video, we're going to continue our series on corporate taxation and shareholder compensation. And what we want to look at in this video is the math side. It's certainly not the only thing that we should look at, but it's the first thing we're going to look at. The math side of the question as to whether or not a business owner should take dividend or salary income. Now, the first thing we have to recognize here, and of course the standard uh, preamble that this is only intended as general advice and you have to deal with an appropriate professional if you have a particular question. So, the first thing that we want to look at here is the theory of dividend integration. And in fact, we could point more broadly to the integration of corporate income. But the theory of dividend integration says if you take salary or dividend, that there should be no difference in the amount of tax paid when you incorporate personal and corporate tax. So the idea here is it's the same overall tax outcome. There's no particular benefit to taking either one of these. And this is true. We're going to see this as we work through some math here. So our government, and especially in the past two or three years, it's uh, currently about the middle of 2015, May of 2015, and our government in recent years has taken fairly aggressive steps to keep this or to reinforce this concept or even sometimes to implement this where we haven't see, seen it previously. So we're going to work through a couple of examples here. The first example we're going to work through is at the small business rate. And we're going to use the province of British Columbia here. It doesn't matter. We can introduce any province. We can introduce any amount of income. And you're going to come up with the same end result that you're going to have the same overall tax outcome. There will be a few pennies difference, but it's not a massive difference. So at the small business rate, and we're going to use, like I said, the province of British Columbia here. But work through any province and you'll come to the same thing. So in British Columbia, we're going to have a at the small business rate a 13.5% corporate tax rate. And we'll deal at the top personal marginal tax rate in BC. So we're going to do this on either side that we're going to deal with a taxpayer who's at a 43.7% tax bracket. Now, there's a little bit of funny in British Columbia right now. There actually is one tax bracket higher, but this is that's a temporary measure. This is the measure that we normally are accustomed to. We're going to work at the 43.7% top tax bracket. So what we're going to see then, let's say that we have a corporation here, and it's a little bit artificial, but let's use $1,000 of corporate income. So if we're going to take this as a dividend, what we're going to find is the small business rate in BC at 13.5% would have to be applied first. So we take that $1,000 minus 13.5%, and we would be left with $865 that would be available to pay out as dividends. And at the small business rate, this would be grossed up now. So you would take this amount of dividend, and we would gross this up by 18%. So we would end up with $1,020.70. That's what we're going to use as our grossed up figure now. And the grossed up figure, that $1,020.70, would then be taxed at a rate of 43.7%. And we would also apply a dividend tax credit. We would take that grossed up amount again, and we would apply a combined tax credit, 11% federal and 2.59% provincial. So that's the federal 11% tax credit and the 2.59% BC tax credit. So we're going to get then 
a tax payable amount of $446.05. So $446.05. And if we take that $1,020.70 times 13.59%, the combined tax credit, we're going to see a tax credit available to this taxpayer of $138.71. And then we would take that dividend, the $865 dividend that we started with. The grossed up amount is just a notional amount. And we would add the tax credit, the $138.71. And then we would take away the actual tax bill, which is $446.05. Sorry, $446.05 and that's our tax and we would end up with five hundred and fifty seven dollars and sixty six cents bottom line now if we decided to instead go the salary route this would be fully deductible for the corporation so instead of using the amount reduced by the corporate tax rate, you would take the full thousand dollars of salary, the corporation would pay that all to the shareholder, and there would be no tax to pay at the corporate level. All the tax would be paid at the personal level. So now we use that 43.7% tax rate, we carve that out. So if we take that thousand dollars less 43.7%, we're going to end up with $563. So we can see that it's a very, very near thing here. On $1,000 of income, we ended up with a $6 difference, or $5.34 difference. That's less than 1%. So a substantially uh, close thing here as to whether we're going to take salary or dividend, there's no significant mathematical advantage and this is what we're going to see pretty much across the board all provinces and all levels of income with dividends now we're going to do one more example here it's going to be again for BC the only difference is here we're going to do this at the corporate general rate So at the corporate general rate now, we can see that BC is going to have a 25% rate. And these rates, by the way, are fairly representative of other provinces. BC isn't really uh, much different from any other province in how it taxes corporations. Although the owners of corporations would tell you that maybe that 1% difference here and there is a big difference, but that's okay. So we've got $1,000 of corporate income and... We're now going to have that taxed at a combined federal and provincial rate of 25%. So we would have $750 available to be paid as a dividend. And we would apply a 38% gross up. This is what we would refer to as an eligible dividend. Whereas the dividends on the left, these guys over here, this is what we would refer to as a non-eligible or an ineligible dividend. And that's where you have that lower 18% gross up here. We would have $1,035 as our grossed up figure. And sorry for my little technical glitch there. So $1,035. And just as we did on the left-hand side now, we're going to take that Roast up amount, that 1,035, we're going to apply the corporate general tax rate at 43, or sorry, the top personal tax rate at 43.7%. And then we're going to take that same $1,035 and we're going to apply in British Columbia here, we're going to see an 11% federal tax credit and, I apologize, we're going to see a 15% federal tax credit and a 10% provincial tax credit for a combined total 25% tax credit. And what we're going to end up with then is we're going to have $452.30 of tax payable and we're going to have a credit then of $258.75. So 
we started with $750. That was the actual amount of dividend paid. Remember, the grossed up amount is just a notional amount. So our $750 dividend plus, once again, a $258.75 tax credit. And then we're going to take away $452.30 of dividend income, or sorry, of tax payable. And that's going to leave us with $556.45 after tax. And once again, we compare that to the amount that you would have left if you had taken salary. And it ends up, again, a very near thing. And we can see also that that amount of tax is nearly identical to the amount of tax payable if you're taking small business dividends. So a lot of people are very shocked to see this, to learn that there is not a mathematical advantage if we're only incorporating tax rates and that we end up with nearly the same amount of tax payable. We even end up, which is most surprising to a lot of people, with the most dollars, although it's only by such a tiny fraction, available if we take salary. What we do see is there's sort of a an old approach to this that used to say that it was beneficial to take dividend income, that you wanted to take a lot of dividend income. That's no longer the case. That, at least not for mathematical advantage, do we need to take dividend income. Now, there can be other reasons to do this, and we're going to explore this in a separate video. But as to the advantages of taking dividends here, we have to walk away from this with an understanding that there is no mathematical advantage. You're not paying less total tax when you take dividends versus salary. If you treat yourself as the business owner, where the complete structure is yours, you own the business and you ultimately make the choice as to whether the business kicks you out dividends or salary. Now, this is different from an investor's perspective. The investor who buys shares in a business where they have no real ownership relationship other than small amounts of shareholdings, that person is going to have the significant advantage that we see on the right side where they took $750 of dividend income and only paid about $200 in tax. That has its benefits. That's better than you would pay on other sorts of income, but that doesn't take into account the fact that this corporation did have to pay tax in order to get this dollar into your hands. So we can see this corporation had really had to make $1,000 to create this net outcome. I do encourage you to work through this for the province of residence. It's easy to look up the tax rates. If you go to a great website like taxtips.ca, you can find all the rates you need there. I hope that this has been useful. I hope this is enlightening, and I hope that it makes sense. Enjoy your continued studies, and please do join us for other videos concerning shareholder compensation. Thank you.